Filke, Officer in Charge of Traffic Services Branch with SAPOL. Uh, we're here today at the Holden Hill Police Station where I can give you an update in relation to some data that's coming from the first week of operation from the mobile phone detection cameras. Uh, as you would be aware, from the 19th of September, these cameras essentially went into enforcement mode and that is people are now starting to receive expiation notices as a result of those of being detected using a mobile phone as opposed to receiving a warning letter which happened uh, for three months up until the 19th of December. What I can tell you is that during the week from the 19th of September to the 25th of September, um, 2,604 detections were made. Uh, those detections were adjudicated by our back office staff at Expiation Notice Branch and as a result 2,544 expiation notices were sent to registered owners of vehicles uh, that were detected by the mobile phone detection cameras. Out of that, uh, three people out of that 2,544 are going to lose their licence because two of those people were detected six, six times and one other was detected five times during that period. We know from the data that we have that on the first day of operation uh, on the 19th of September, 405 notices were issued. We also know that from the traffic volume during the grace period or towards the end of the grace period, we were detecting drivers at around about 0.37% of vehicle volume were being detected using their mobile phones. Um, that has now dropped to 0.24% of vehicle volume uh, of people who are committing offences, uh, mobile phone related offences. So what is pleasing with that is that the message is getting through to some people uh, that the mobile phone detection cameras are out there and that their behaviour is changing in terms of being uh, detected using a mobile phone. So while that's good, what we also know is that there are still some South Australian motoring public uh, that think it's okay to use a mobile phone while you're driving. So 2,544 detections in the first week um, with three people going to lose their licence shows us and should show the members of the public uh, that there's still some work to be done to change the behaviour. Uh, there's no secret about where these locations are. We've been quite upfront with that right from the start. Um, this is not about revenue raising where a lot of people think that it is. This is about changing people's behaviour. This is around road safety. This is around people making the right decision. Uh, this is around people um, making sure that they're not causing any risk to themselves or other road users. At the end of the day, uh, the simple way to avoid paying any mobile phone detection fine or to stop losing your licence is just not to use your phone while driving. Uh, we can't be any more clear on this. We've been talking about this now for weeks. Um, those people who still think it's all right to drive around using a mobile phone, uh, you'll be detected by the cameras. And not only that, you've got police out there every day who are vigilant in terms of people using their mobile phones. You'll also be stopped, spoken to, and uh, issued expiation notices by mobile police patrols. So while there's some policing aspects to the, uh, that the detection rate is dropping, we also know uh, that there's some work to do. Uh, people need to change their behaviour and continue to change their behaviour. Any questions? Can I ask you, um, of the potential incidents, something like 2.3% were pursued, why is that because you couldn't tell if it was a mobile phone or another object? Or why weren't they pursued? Yeah, uh, we've been up front right from the start is that uh, the AI technology in the mobile phone detection cameras also has a level of, we'll call it human intervention at the back end where all of those photographs are assessed. Um, now I can't tell you exactly why the 3% or close to 3% um, were, uh, as if you like, discarded from the expiation notice, uh, why they weren't given expiation notices. Um, suffice to say, uh, they have been trained to determine whether an offence has been uh, detected or not. And if there's some element of doubt, then an expiation notice won't be given. Losing their licenses, what was that repeated behaviour? Was it the holding of the phone or was it sitting on the, on the seat? Uh, again, I don't have that data in front of me. Uh, at the end of the day, you're only going to get a mobile phone a fine if you're holding the phone. Now, we've been clear on what holding the phone means. Uh, that's having it on any part of your body. Uh, there are times uh, that you can touch the phone uh, in certain circumstances, and that is if it is in a commercially 
approved and manufactured cradle and only to make and receive a telephone call, not for anything else. So without seeing all of the photographs, uh, all of those photographs would have met the threshold that the phone was being held and held in terms of what the legislation actually means. Uh, the other part about that is the three people who um, are going to lose their licence, uh, those three people also receive warning letters during the warning period. So they know what, they know what it means. Um, and they're still running the risk of, of using their mobile phone. Does that strike us a little bit baffling Sorry. that the, the people uh, are such, uh, such a volume of repeated offending? Oh yeah, yeah, it is baffling. Um, it's, dis it's disappointing because, um, as I said, we've been speaking this message now for a number of weeks um, around people uh, using mobile phones while they're driving, encouraging them to change their behaviour. Uh, these mobile phone detection cameras um, are in high volume traffic areas. Um, None of them are situated at traffic lights where people are stationary. Traffic is always moving through these locations, which um, essentially ups the ante in terms of an ability to have a collision. So it's baffling, it's disappointing, um, but it's, it's incumbent on all road users now to just to heed the message, change their behaviour, uh, and hopefully we'll get a better result um, in the weeks that follow. How long so, do they lose their licence? So they'll have a minimum three months loss of licence um, when if they've had four or more offences. So all the demerit points will be taken, and they'll have a minimum of three months loss of licence. Baron, is it safe to believe that at least now these guys who've got their warning letters in the mail will now face some sort of prosecution from flouting laws? Sorry, can you? Is safe to believe that now the expiation or the, the period of um, proxies are now over that these guys will be prosecuted and they will face the law? Oh what? Um, I, I don't know that SAPOL are relieved necessarily, it's, but what it, what it shows is we've given you a chance, we've spoken about it, if you continue to break the law then you are going to be penalised for it. Um, we, we, in, we brought out the, the grace period um, not, not to um, in the hope that we'll end up issuing lots of fines, this has always been around changing driver behaviour. Now, if this now takes people to be fined and lose their licence and demerit points to change their behaviour, well, that's not what we might be relieved for, but we're not relieved the fact that we're now issuing fines. We just want people to change the way they use the road. Do we know how these numbers stack up against other states who have gone through the same process? Uh, and I don't have those numbers in front of me, but we are, we are a smaller state, obviously, than some of the other states that use these. So without having that data in front of me to give you an accurate sort of comparison, um, it's, probably, it's not, not fair for me to do. In that, in that week, uh, we know that just over a million vehicles uh, passed those five sites. Um, and again, I've, as I've said, they're in high traffic volume areas. So how that stacks up against interstate, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. And there's, there's plans to expand those sites. Do you have any update on where that will be yet? No, not yet. That is still in conversation with the Department of Infrastructure and Transport and SAPOL uh, as we work through uh, the best places to put those from a strategic perspective, but also you'd understand it takes quite a bit of infrastructure um, to mount these cameras. So we just need to be mindful that there's a few different issues to work through uh, before we can actually finalise uh, a site. When, uh, there are two more sites um, to go in, and I would expect that there'll be some time in 2025 uh, without being too specific around timing. I expect that it will, it will happen sometime next year. Will they be announced or do you think one day they'll pop up without the public giving any forewarning? Uh, look, I, it's not something that we've spoken about in terms of whether we announce it or not. I think um, we've been fair in this process the whole way along. So um, there's probably a chance that we'll, we'll announce it without actually knowing that's what we'll do. But um, we've been upfront and clear with the five that are here. So I imagine um, we, we'd be upfront around the other two. Do you guys, off the top of your head, sorry, I know we've got it back at work, but what um, what's the the most drivers who received a, a warning in the grace period in one week? Was it like 6,000 or something? Or sure. So how, how many drivers? Yeah. So we, we do know from some of the previous data, and, and you will have this previous data, there were some drivers that were receiving in excess of 30 warning letters during the grace period. Is that what you're asking? No, I mean, like, I know this is 0.24% um, compared oh. to 0.37. So how many is the 0.37? Uh, in a week, was it 6,000 who got caught the first week of the grace period? Uh, there was uh, 2,544 
expiation notices were issued. But of the grace period three months ago? No, I don't, don't have those numbers in front of me, but I think you do have those yeah, numbers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have any rough information about uh, the split between private commercial vehicles being pinged? No, I don't. No. Um, there was a few individuals that were identified during the grace period that mm. had those several expiation notices, one who had I think about 33. Mm. Are any of those individuals out of them in the three that are now going to lose their licenses or are they separate people? Uh, all, all I do know is that the three that are going to have their licenses um, disqualified because of too many demerit points were definitely sent warning letters during the warning period. Whether they are three that are in that higher category, that I don't know. I just know that they were sent warning letters. Can you comment at all whether there are cultural issues at play here, where getting all these letters we just don't understand them because they're from different cultural backgrounds? Um, no, I don't, I don't, don't know that. I, I can't, uh, I don't have any data as to uh, the names of the registered owners and whether there is any cultural issues there. Um, I think what the cultural issue is, is that people need to understand that the new way um, of dealing with your mobile phone in a culture perspective is you don't use it while you're driving. Um, people need to get that into the, the phone uh, use culture because as we know our lives are pretty connected. Uh, mobile phone um, is almost in everybody's vehicle. Some people uh, need them for work purposes in their, in their vehicles and that is fine um, and you can use your mobile phone in your vehicle in certain circumstances. So the culture and the mindset of people who use their phone, particularly in a, in a vehicle, uh, in those certain circumstances needs to change. Tanner, is there any plan to introduce the mobile, mobile cameras that we've seen in, say, New South Wales? Yeah, and I think I've said that before. We're always exploring opportunities to enhance road safety outcomes. Uh, we do know that those particular type of uh, capabilities used interstate. Uh, that is not something uh, that we're not open to, but at the moment that's not something we're, we're, we're looking at. But if down the track, if it improves road safety, uh, we'll do everything we can to improve road safety outcomes. Are you hopeful that the number of offenders will keep on decreasing as more people you know, lose their licenses? Uh, yeah, and I think I've said this before, I'd be quite happy to stand up here and say that we have no detections and that uh, the detections have dropped to zero because that's what this is about. This is about changing road user behaviour. This is not about issuing fines and I think the Minister has been up here before and said if they don't raise a single cent out of the mobile phone detection cameras um, that's a positive result for government, it's a positive result for road safety outcomes. So uh, if we can see that number to continue to come down then that's a good thing. Thank you. Um, just on a separate topic before we head off, um, there was some pretty graphic vision that was dropped over the weekend of an incident in Port Elliot. Mm. Just getting a reaction on that, on, on the guy that ran over a group of people. Yeah, it was uh, horrific footage, wasn't it really? Um, and I, I think it probably made everyone sort of stop and stare at their televisions um, and be really concerned for uh, the victim and, and the other witnesses and the other people that were, were hurt during that incident. Um, we do know that uh, fortunately that uh, the person who received the most injuries is, is out of the life-threatening um, status at the moment, uh, but he's going to have some injuries that are going to change his life forever and his life will never be the same. Um, and this is how quickly things can escalate and this is how quickly things can happen. Um, and, and we've all seen the footage around what the lead up to that incident is. and but driving or the alleged driving of a vehicle into a crowd of people is not acceptable in, in anyone's language or in, in anyone's world so um, people need just to take stock of what they're doing make good decisions because the ramifications of that uh, for the driver uh, the, um, the alleged offending driver and for all those witnesses and those people that were injured now um, looks a lot different to what it was at the start of the weekend. Um, that could have ended significantly more tra with more tragedy than what it has, and, and we're lucky for that, but there was no need for that to even happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.